Welcome back to another short video here from Bean Energy. What we're going to be looking at today is charging a single battery using two individual Palmister 60 amp charge controllers. The controversy here is are they going to fight each other and not be able to charge the battery correctly? So we're going to do this on a lead acid battery here that we've got. This is an AGM out of a, a BMW. Then we will also do it on a 48 volt lithium ion battery. Let's set these up do some tests and see how they operate. So now what we've got here is these two Palmister 60 amp charge controllers. These are pretty inexpensive, about a hundred bucks a piece if you grab them from Amazon. I try to keep them in stock as well if you need any. We want to run through the settings here and see that they are both set up the same. Get into the settings. All right, so we're not using that setting. So we're going up to float voltages at 13.3. We've got bulk charging at 14.5. This is the discharge cutoff, which we're not using. And the mode, which is lead acid, which is 00. 01 would be a lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate, whatever. Constant current, constant voltage. We're in float mode already. This battery is fully charged. So what we're going to do now is put some load on the battery with this battery tester. So this is just alligator clipped up to the battery. So let's just hit this real quick. You'll notice that our voltage is down at 11.1 volts. This is not a very healthy battery. We'll let that back off again. Now it is cloudy out today, so we're not expecting a whole lot of power coming in. This guy here has two 400 watt Jinkos in series connected to it. It's weird, the sun must be really uh, in a weird spot. This one here actually only has one 400 watt Jinko connected to it. This one's two. Regardless, yeah, you'll see the, the voltage is starting to come up on this one now. This screen here is the status screen, and you'll see that it's at 8. 8 means that it's in float mode, and then of course you see the temperature here. When these hit 40 degrees Celsius, the fan will come on and start cooling them off. It's nice and cool in this room right now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that switch again to pull these down into bulk charging mode. So we're down to 4, that's bulk charging. I let off the switch. We're going to see now if they are able to come back in synchronized fashion into a float mode. So they should pass through a 7, which would be absorption, and then go to 8, which would be float. So there's 7, 7, and then 8. They did pretty well. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that these charge controllers aren't terribly accurate, right? Like um, these here that I got were a batch from earlier in the year, and they seemed a little bit optimistic, but I have one now that I bought just last month, and if I connect a single 400 watt panel to it, it can show that I'm getting 460 watts out of that panel. That's that's really optimistic, not, not realistic. Something that I wanted to try too was if we go in here and change the setting on one of these and not the other, what happens? If I change the bulk charging rate to where I'm gonna only charge to 14.3 on here, and whenever you change a setting on these, it does not automatically take. What you gotta do is turn off the solar and then turn off the battery and reboot the device. I have a nifty switch up here for turning off the solar. So I'm gonna do this, that'll turn off both feeds, and then I will just unclamp the battery and put that back on. And then what you wanna do is go back in and verify that your setting changed. So now that's at 14.3, and this one's at 14.5. So now let's turn the solar back on. So now what should happen is when I put a load on this and take it back off, this guy's going to stop charging a lot sooner because his bulk rate is much less. And it looks like they managed to get into float mode pretty easy. Let's watch that again. So really this one should hit uh, absorption or float much quicker than this one. Really didn't seem to matter much. Well, this one's, oh, there we go. So this one's in float, and this one's, this one did a bit of cycling. It looks like it's back in float. Let's do that. And I think that would be the thing you can do. If they're out of sync, and they're not working correctly, set one of them as the master, right? And it has the, the real voltages that you want for your bulk charging. 
and set all the ones the other ones just a little bit lower so as you're getting to the top of your battery you're not going to need all of your charging anyway so you could drop down to using just one charge controller the other ones are just going to be there for once it hits float mode or when you're using a lot of energy and you need all the charge controllers to be pushing into the battery so let's go into here and let's drop it a little more let's go to like 13 something and see what happens 13 6 then we're going to reset everything again See, it didn't change. That's why you always go in and check it. Let's try this again. Leave it off for a little bit longer. See if that worked. No. Nope. There we go. Now it's at 13.5. So now let's turn the solar on. The battery a little bit of push here and go check the statuses and give me the battery a little push again okay so we're at four so this one already went into absorption so that seemed to work so far this one's still at four so that's still bulk charging and there we go back into eight that dropped down to four again seven eight it might be the health of my battery. The voltage seems to drop really quickly. And there we go. Racking to float. Uh, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm missing something here. It seems like these work pretty well in a pair. Even though they're not really synchronized to each other. But I am no expert in lead acid batteries. Maybe I've got this wrong. Let me go ahead and get this whole setup changed. So that I can charge my 48 volt battery. And we'll see how it reacts when it gets close to full. So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and shut everything off and I will wire up my 48 volt battery and we'll be right back. All right then, so what we're gonna do now is test out the charging of a lithium ion pack. This is a 13S pack. So what I've done here is go into the settings and you'll see that these are in the 12 volt uh, voltages, right? This is 13.4 max voltage. We've got our 0, 01 here, which means we're doing a constant current, constant voltage charge profile for our lithium ion. And D02 is going to be our other parameter that we're going to change. And this parameter is going to be times 4. Uh, 13S times 4.2 volts per cell is 54.6 max for my pack. And if you divide that by 4, we get 13.65. This should be 13.65. Now what I said earlier about checking with the multimeter, right? I've checked this with the multimeter and these read a bit high. So I don't want it to overcharge. So I'm going to set this down to 13.4. I did the same with the other. They're both set to the same. Now we're going to exit out. We are going to turn our charging on. So here comes our PV. So we are at 53.7 and 53.5. Slightly off topic here, but when your battery voltage is too high and you need to bring it down for a test, what do you do? You go get yourself out of the back room a heater from your old HVAC system. This one that I'm connected to is a 240 volt, 5.7 kilowatt coil here. That's pulling about 15 amps off of my battery at like 50 volts. So I'm able to bring my batteries down to a voltage that makes sense to be able to run this test. I think we're down to about that range. Just watch out when you're messing with stuff this high of voltage. You get sparks that are, yeah, you saw that on the screen, that are like welding sparks, right? You don't wanna look at that. Make sure you block it from your eyes. So now we're down at 51.8 and 52 volts. Our PV is off. These should charge up to 53 something. If we've got 13.4 times four is 53.6, should be our max voltage. Let's flip the PV on and see how we go. This one here should hit the voltage first and start tapering off its charge current. And then this one here should follow behind shortly thereafter because this one's reading a slightly higher voltage. All right, so we can definitely see that this is in constant voltage mode. It's dropped off below an amp and this one is still in constant current mode. So, so far so good. We got kind of a, in a way it's like a master-slave relationship in that this one has a higher setting 
I, I don't know that it would really matter. I mean, they could if, if the circuitry inside was perfectly synced, then they would just both drop into constant voltage mode at the same time. I don't know that you're really gonna lose much um, regardless, because as soon as this one drops in, this one's gonna drop in very soon. So you're losing a little bit of charge current because this one's dropping in sooner. But if this one had stayed in constant current mode, then it, it wouldn't be very long before both of them dropped into constant voltage mode. So I'm not worried about them being a little bit off from each other. Um, so now we're going to watch it and see this continue to drop. And then this one should start dropping it. It may have. It's at 2.8. But that could just be some additional clouds that are up there blocking a little bit of the sunlight. So this one has reached full, according to it. This guy's still going gangbusters. So here we go, it has hit constant voltage. We're down to two and a half amps. So it is interesting that this hit 53.8 before it hit constant voltage. This one hit 53.6 before it hit constant voltage. So 0.2 volts isn't really that much of a difference. Um, just trying to think in my head how the circuitry works. Because obviously, you know, readouts versus the actual charge controller inside. And notice too that I bought these from two different vendors and they look different on the label. I mean, they were only bought maybe a couple months difference from each other. So I need to open these both up and see if they actually look the same on the inside. For the purpose of our test today, this has worked. You can see the constant voltage. It's, it's dropping its amperage even more and we're good. So it can charge a lithium ion two charge controllers, one battery. So there you have it. If you want to charge a lead acid battery, you want to charge your lithium ion battery, I know that looks like an ammo case, not a battery, right? Check out my other videos on that. And you want to use two charge controllers at the same time, I know these work. I'm doing it with a 1600 watt array total, uh, 800 watts on one controller and 800 watts on the other one. Was able to charge either of these batteries and then operate it as I would expect and these don't have any communication between them. I'm sure there's reasons that the nicer charge controllers talk to each other when they do this instead of just act dumb with each other, but it does seem to work. You guys let me know if I'm missing something here and this is a stupid idea, but this is the result of my test. Till next time, see you guys right back here at Bean Energy.